In today's video, I'm going to give you a list of uh, the best AAU basketball plays that I have seen that work extremely well. So let's get down and let's check these out. This first one is absolutely amazing. So if the other team is running a zone, as an example, a 2-3 zone. First off, I just want to say if they're not defending the point, take that shot every single time. However, if they are defending the point as they should, generally a double team up top, what you would like to see is this, and it works so darn well. Basically, you're going to have a screen from the wing, it doesn't matter which wing, we're just going to pick the left side for now. And that's generally going to be shifting the zone slightly out towards that left side, especially with player 1 using that screen. We don't want player 2 to be rolling straight to the basket, he can sit around that free throw line because we want player 1 to really be attacking player 4 in this case because this middle defender here, who's generally guarding this area, we're going to be having a screen set by player 4 for player 5 to be popping out somewhere into this corner, whether it be a mid-range shot if he can't shoot very well, or to the 3-point line if he's a good shooter. We're going to then get that pass to player 5, and he should be open enough to be able to take that mid-range shot. Now, I personally would like to add this to the play, and that is having player 3 and 2 crash the boards, so that we can have 3 players, plus potentially player 5 crashing the boards, himself to get that rebound. I always like to try to get as many rebounds as possible. So just to recap all at once, we will have player 2 set a screen and player 4 set a screen. Player 1 using that screen, player 5 using that screen, pass over to player 5 for that mid-range or 3-point shot. This next play is a horns play and it's works extremely well. We're going to have a screen down from players 5 and 4 towards those corner players. When that happens, we want to see player 3 and 2 popping up for the potential 3 point shots. However, that's not the only thing that we want to look at. We also want to see if there's any mismatches down low. Let's say for example, player 5 got that mismatch player 4 would clear out, and then we could either have player 5 post up in the middle and player 1 could pass him the ball, or if we already passed over to player 3, he could pass that ball into player 5 himself. The entry passes from the wings are much easier than entry passes from the point, just so you know. This same play could actually be ran as a 5 out play as well, where we would have the wings set the screen down, the pin down screens, for players 3 and 2. And again, same idea, players 3 and 2 would be popping off. And then, of course, if there was a mismatch, which is what we really want to see, we would then be able to get that pass into player 5 or to the wing first so that we can have player 5 post up as well. And if you want to see the complete guide to the 5 out basketball offense, make sure to go check out the link down in the description below. Now more of a traditional 3 out 2 in style offense in this play works extremely well against a man to man defense. We're going to have players 2 and 3, they're going to be popping down towards the corners. At this time we're going to be having players 5 and 4 set screens, what I call a sandwich screen because this gives player 1 the option to go either left or right. If as an example player 1 uses 4 as a screen, we would have player 4 look to either attack the basket or look to have player 4 as a passing option. If for example player 4 hedged and let's say they switched or whatever may happen, we could get that pass to player 4, but if player 1 drives hard enough, that could drop player 2 red to try to play help defense on ball side, which is always a massive mistake when that happens. It should really be player 3 coming over to try and defend and player 1 to try and cut off what's happening. However, this happens a lot at the youth level, so if that happens, kick the ball out to player 2 for that 3 point shot. I'm a big proponent of taking as many 3's as you can as long as they are wide open. And the main reason behind that is of course if we have a whole team or at least most of a team that does not shoot 3's, what's going to happen? The other team is going to sink their defense down into the paint because they know that you can't shoot or you're unwilling to shoot. And when that happens, 
you don't have any passing lanes, you don't have any driving lanes, they're sinking down, they're cutting off your angles, and you cannot score. So, by having the and the ability to instill confidence in your players to be able to shoot that ball, it keeps the defense honest, it pulls them out to the three-point line, which gives you passing lanes, it gives you driving lanes, and it gives you cutting lanes so that you can get those passes in. That is why you really want to instill your into your players that they can shoot the three. I don't really understand why some coaches don't want their kids to shoot threes. We should be teaching kids to shoot the ball for one, but also to have the confidence to shoot in game. So this last and final play is a high 1-4 offense, and this works so well. It's crazy. So what we are going to have is player 2. He's going to be cutting down towards this corner. At the same time, we're going to be setting up a high staggered screen for player 3 to use to pop out towards this wing. Once we get those screens set and player 2 cuts across and player 3 cuts across, if he gets that ball, he needs to know, do I shoot the ball or do I attack the rim? That is the question he needs to ask himself. If his man goes underneath the screen, he needs to be jacking that 3 because he should have the space to be able to do so. If player 3 goes over top of both of these screens and player 3 gets that ball, because his defender went over top, he needs to attack the rim. He needs to go in for that layup. If he's not open, the next option we're going to have is player 4 setting that screen down, player 1 dribbling out towards this left side, player 5 getting out of the key, and player 2 using that screen and either popping for a 3 or cutting towards the basket, all depending on what his man does. Again, if his man goes over top of the screen, we really want him to cut towards the basket. That's going to give him the open lane for a right-handed layup. However, if his man goes underneath that screen, just definitely sit there, pop the shot, five and three can go in and get your rebound if you miss. I hope that these basketball plays can help your team win more games. If they do, hit that like button, subscribe, go check out my complete guide to the 5-out basketball offense down in the description below.